Hey, fix your hair back out again with another one. Guess what? Krusty's a roller. Stick around. Let's get started. Last video, I went and uh, turned around and I welded all this up. Got all this here closed up, got all the rust repair repaired on it. You want to check it out? Check out the video before this one. Uh, plan is today to get that installed. I got to do some measurements. I got to find out my widths here with the chassis, how long this is, how big my plates are going to be on the side, where my seat location is going to be too. I got a bunch of things to figure out there now, so I got to draw up some plans to figure out uh, to get that set up. I don't know if that's going to be the right length or not. Um, I got some issues I may have to cross, so I'm going to start uh, fitting that up, drop some plans, get some ideas going, and we'll get started on putting the front chassis in this. Well, I've been busy. What I went and did is basically all I did is I put the frame in the car, okay? I made up these two braces here, first of all. Uh, this is just old scrap steel I had kicking around and it lays on top of the rail because I want this rail to be the height of this rail. So I cut it the length sort of laid on top of it in two sections and I come to realize that the car was like it, it goes wider as it goes back about an inch from this point to this point uh, which is no big deal. So what I did is then I clamped it in place then I played around with getting the tire centered in place. Uh, where I wanted it. Then I turned around and done X measurements from a few points back through the car to make sure that it sits level in the or straight in the car. Measured from here to the rockers on both sides. Get them numbers the same on both sides. I had to remove that uh, wheel dolly out from underneath. I had to jack it up in order to do this because I can only put it on the bottom of these stands. I couldn't put it no lower. So I had to adjust everything for that because the little wooden cradle I had made was in the way of these rails going back through it. Uh, they sat on top of the rails and my outriggers would have been in the way and would have been hard to weld them on here. Um, other than that, let me think. I had some issues I had to deal with. Um, the biggest issue I had is where to cut off this back section here in relation to my cross member. I'm going to put a, a one piece of two by three straight across here. Okay? And it's just going to be welded on. I'll cut the center out of it later on, but it just keeps everything square for now. So, like, uh, sometimes you might want to just put a piece off here and a piece off here, but it's kind of hard to keep everything square. So one big length I'll put across here, and then later on I'll cut the center out of it. Uh, the problem I run into is that I had to find my seating position and my leg room. Okay, now in order to find that, I had to figure out where my roll cage was going to go in relation to the body itself going up through the car, like out here. Like it wasn't going to end up here, I knew that. And it's about right here now, the roll cage is going to come up through here in the body. And I had to split the difference. The issue I had, as you can see, I got tires put in the car. Um, I had to find the center line of the car forward. I needed 24 inches of clearance for the leaf spring to fit in the car, okay? Now, that first mark you see there, uh, that's the uh, the outside edge of the two, two by three, and that's the inside edge, so the two by three is gonna pass right through here. What I'm gonna end up doing is when I put my pocket in for my leaf springs, I'm gonna notch it into the outrigger that goes onto this here. A lot to be talking about right now. I'll be carrying on, getting into that, all that later on. Um, how I found my seating arrangement, all I did, this is the seat I'm running, and I sat in the thing, I used the wall as my roll cage uh, datum line. If you look at this picture here, you'll see the NHRA specs of what you need for uh, distances on roll cages. And they call for uh, no more than six inches back from the roll bar. Uh, doing it this way here, I'm six inches back from this here, the garage door is the actual face of the roll bar. Because um, when I sit in and I measure back from my head, I'm six inches from the, uh, the roll cage, which is fine. And I could probably tip the seat back. So then I just sat in it and I just kicked this block of wood out as far as I could get it to see 
how much leg room I needed. I just locked my knees so that I could say, okay, this is the maximum amount of leg room I'm going to need. Now, the problem with that was I was out here further, and I had to split the difference. I had to lose two inches or so in leg room in order to get this 24 inches where it's to here now. It was tight trying to, to split everything. I had to go a little bit in here, a little bit in here, because there's nothing worse than being in this car with uh, tight leg room. I'm 6'1", so I got to build this so I can fit in it, and I want to be crammed up in it either. So um, this is what I got figured out here now. What I got to do next is I got to make four plates that'll mount here. Uh, they're going to be six inches wide by the, uh, the length of the rail. I'm going to bring them right down to the bottom of the rail, and that way I'll have four good jack points then on the car for if I ever want to jack it up on a hoist or something that could take it off the rockers. And, and then I got to build uh, two outriggers here. And then I got to build a big long one to go across here that I can put it in place. Now, up here the front one, the front outrigger, the plan is here. Is if you look across, you see the way the, this door post goes and goes up here. My roll cage is going to run down through here into the dash and then down through here. So there's where my outrigger is going to be right here. It's going to run down through the dash right here. I'm going to cut the corner off this section here. That way I can weld all this back in the car uh, after the fact when I get the roll cage and everything completed. And, I'm, and I put the dash in. I haven't got a, the dash pad interfering with the roll cage going down through the car, which is good. Um, so I haven't got to worry about cutting up the dash pad as if it mattered. But anyway, so I got that figured out where that got to go. So then I got to make them two outriggers and the piece across the back here. And then I can start welding it all in. So I'm going to go ahead now and start making up all the pieces that i got to put in there. Didn't think I was just going to uh, go on and let you not see it set up. Oh, it's doing a little wheelie, look. I had to jack it all up. That's ground where it should be because i got that set up at ride height in the wheel well. So that's the height it will be. And then, of course, the tires would have to go inside the car a bit more. But I had to do that to find out the distance forward. But uh, she's looking pretty cool there now. I should point out um, the 24 inches that I was talking about that I had to have from the center line of the rear end to the spring eye, okay? <clears throat> this is the front of the spring, and this is the spring eye. What I have here is a set of leaf springs out of a Jeep YJ, okay? The reason why I'm going with them, they're short leafs, okay? They're a short leaf spring from here to here. I couldn't go with like a Camaro or Firebird or anything like that. Um, the factory ones were only narrow. Or narrow springs. I wanted to go with a wide spring, but I wanted a spring that was, uh, you know, not too long either. Right? Eventually, maybe I'll have a custom set of uh, springs made for this, but for now, I'm putting it together with what I have. And what I did is I marked the center line of the spring on the table, and then I come over here and I marked the outer far edge, okay? Then I measured up again. I need distance here for, I'm putting a Caltrack unit on this here for it to rotate. So I need a bit of room ahead of this spring. I measured from here to here and I had 24 inches. And this is where that measurement come from on the leaf spring. So when I put it in the car, the rear end will be mounted here and this will be underneath the driver's seat. Well, behind the driver's seat, below the roll cage. And I'll tie the roll cage into these points here um, on the car as well to give it a bit of strength. Okay, first thing I went and did, I got some 1-8 plate here, it's 1-8 thick, and I marked it out, I figured out my measurement, uh, the height of my rocker is 5 inches, and I want the plates to be 6, so I worked it out, and it worked out as a 24 inch piece, so I'm going to get 4 pieces out of it, that's how many I need, so I'm going to go ahead now and I'll mark these here, I cut these out, and then I'll have my 4 plates. So here's what I got, I got the 4 plates made up, and what I went ahead and did, and I put 4 um, plug well holes in the center of the panel. There's no particular spot. I just picked random spots. I wanted to give strength because the 2 by 3 is going to be mounting right here on this plate. So I wanted to give it strength right behind it. So I'll put plug wells in it to take the strength of it. Because this is going to be welded all the way around here on the outside edge. But there's going to be nothing in the middle and the plate is going to be welded here. So by putting a few plug wells in it, it just gives you more security. So I got the four of them made. So now I can move on to figuring out my two front outriggers and my rear cross member. I'm going to measure up for them and subtract the thickness of the 1 8 plate of them and make up the two front outriggers and the rear cross member. So I got all the pieces made. There's the two front outriggers 
and this will be the back one going across across the back end of it. The center of this will be cut out later on. I might just do a drive shaft loop in it, I don't know, but to make everything symmetrical and to give you a platform to work off of, it's always good to have a position like this in the car. And I got these plates here now. I got them done, all this done. Now the only thing I left to do is over here on the car. I got a mark back this distance here, as you can see, to that line there, and I got to cut the frame rail off there, because that's where the uh, two by three is going to mount to and weld onto that there and go straight across there. Now someone might say, well Tony, why didn't you build the whole chassis all in one piece? For the simple fact that the back chassis rails are going to be back over here, going back this way, on the outside of this one. And we've always found that if you found a neutral point on the back side of the car to build the front off of, you can get the front clued up, finished up and fitted, and you can do the same with the back. You can start, you can do the back first or do the front first, whichever you wish to do. But it's very hard to try to build the whole works all at once. And uh, you can do it, don't get me wrong, it's easy. But uh, it's a lot harder to, I don't, I don't like getting too far into things. I'm, I got the front end straightened away, so now I'm getting it straightened away to the point that it's part of the car, and then I'll build the back half. Okay, so I got them two sections cut off. The ends of them cut off there, and I beveled off the ends of it, and I got that all ready. And I went ahead and I marked it over here. Where the plates are going to go, I have one plate put over here. I have another plate mounted here. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to attack weld them on in place here, get them held in place. I'm not going to fully weld this chassis into the car right yet. Uh, my whole plan is to uh, build this car, get the roll cage and everything built, then take the body off it. And that way I can do the roll cage nice, paint the roll cage, do all that type of stuff with it. But for now, I'm going to uh, just basically tack weld the, the sidebars on so I can just cut the uh, four tacks and I can take the chassis out of the car. These plates are going to run a few beads on them and stuff like that. Not going to fully weld everything here tonight because uh, I'm just going to get everything set up, make sure I'm happy with it. And if I find anything uh, measurement wise, I can just start cutting things off and letting it go free. So I'm just going to go ahead now and I'm going to weld these two plates on, plug weld them four little holes and on both sides and then start fitting this piece in here and getting that rigged up, that cross member. Okay, I got them welded in. I plug welded in the middle, got that done and I just uh, ran beads around the four corners. I'm eventually gonna weld that in solid but for now that's all I'm going to do with it. And I did the same thing over here on this side. As you can see, I'm gonna clean up them welds now and I'm gonna install this cross member here. So there's the cross member. Place. You see the way it runs across there now. Mounts from either rocker. And then it's joined on to the uh, chassis rail coming back through it. I took measurements off of this here. I took measurements off the body. Uh, made sure it was square this way. I measured from the back of the rail right up to the front of the rail on both sides. And uh, I went and ran a bead on the top there and tacked it on the bottom. I'm not going to fully weld it yet. And over there you can see where the plates are. If you look over there you can see I only got tacked on the four corners. That's all I'm going to do with that for now. I'm going to go back now and I'll run beads on the rest of the, uh, the plate and everything get that welded in. But I only have four tacks on it. Two on that side and then two over there on each corner. Uh, that's all I'm going to do for that now because then I can just cut them clear and uh, take the body off the car and uh, I can actually do the chassis in the car and finish the chassis right off. Because now we're going to move up to here and I'm going to clean up that place over here, get the plates set up in place and get them welded on so I can put the two outriggers on her. I got one plate in put in place and I got the other one put in place. They're ready to weld in. I chose those locations because this little roll cage is going to run up through here. Just ahead of this bar here, this is the dash bracket and then go up here and go through the dash here. That's the plan I got anyway. So I'm going to weld them on there now and then I can start putting the last two pieces in place along here. Well, I got a bit ahead of myself. I went and got them uh, other sections put on as well. I squared them up, measured them off the rear rail, this cross member here. I squared them this way and I put them in a point. You can see it over there now on the other side. The roll cage will come up along here and it'll mount right on top of that. This is the reason for these points here, see? That's where the, the main loop is going to mount there. And then the front bar that goes up across the top of the windshield and comes down, that's going to meet there. 
So that'll be four points for the main cage on the car. So I got, I got them welded so far, so much in it, that they can hold them, they're tack welded on the sides here. She's all set up here now to the whole point that I can go ahead now and I can solid weld all the rest of it. Not going to do that right away. I'm going to start on figuring out this rear end setup now. See if I can figure out a chassis rail for the back of it. But I've been busy. I spent the morning stripping apart leaf springs. Okay. The problem I ran into is that all the leaf springs that I hauled apart, I hauled apart four or five. You can see the difference in the height of them. Okay. And I went through one, two, three, four, five, five sets of springs before I found a set that I was happy with. And this is the carnage from all that. I got something made up here on the bench now. I got two leaf springs figured out. As you can see, they're the same height. And I got uh, springs. I went and turned around and went and matched up all the individual springs separately. So they all basically had the same height to them. And I just got to mock together here now, I have to strip them apart and figuring out what I'm going to do with them. Now this may be just temporary, I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm going to build it around this, these springs, and uh, if need be, I will have a custom spring made for it later. It's very hard to build a custom spring now when I don't know my weights and how it's going to sit and the sag and all this type of stuff. So, I'm just going to build it from these old leaf springs and uh, I'll get an idea of where everything got to go. Now back here, I was playing around with it, trying to figure out angles and stuff like that. Put the tire in place, getting chassis rail heights. And this is roughly what I'm up to, up to. Okay, there's going to be some sort of block or something in here. I'm pretty sure, I don't know how big of a block, this is what I'm saying. Until it has the weight in the car, I'm not going to know. Uh, I got a bit of mounting point up here. That there will be the height of my chassis rail. I'm trying to keep it where the factory floor was originally came through, and I gotta put a slider on that. So I must have the frame rail to come back that so I got a nice sensible trunk in it. And up front, I still haven't figured out how I'm gonna build a front chassis rail yet. I'll get to that. I'm gonna concentrate on building the spring mount for it first, because I'm gonna have the front spring adjustable that I can go up and down with it on the front of the car. It's just that I gotta figure out where my starting point is gonna be for my bottom hole. Because I think I may only have like three inches possibly four inches of upward travel that I can move that spring. All that has to do with uh, traction uh, is more ability to be able to adjust your suspension. Uh, most leaf spring cars you can't and by moving the front eye uh, characteristics change and the car separates better and hooks better. So I gotta cross all that bridge now when I get to it but I'm trying to cover myself on it now. All the research I've done, I've uh, asked a lot of guys on the uh, Leaf Spring site on Facebook talking about the heights of these sections here under the different cars and I keep getting a, a, like a 5 to 7 degree angle going this way from this point to this point so I got it set up there now at about 7 degrees and uh, I figured well that should be close enough so I got somewhere to go. So I'm going to go back over on the bench now and start mocking up them them that set of springs I got over, throw a couple of bolts in them for center bolts and see what I can come up with. I spent the full day um, test fitting stuff, changing angles, moving stuff around, laying stuff in place, trying to find my, you know, where everything's going to go. Where How is it going to be mounted in the front? Where's the mount going to go? What's the mount going to shape like? Uh, is it going to need lowering blocks? Uh, how much of a lowering block? Uh, am I going to have the off center the, the, the center pin, right? Uh, you know, up here, if I was going to have the off center that, where was the uh, slider going to mount to? Uh, where was the back ch chassis rail going to mount to? There was a lot of things I had to figure out. I go over here, I turn around, I had to figure out the angle of the spring. I wanted that seven degrees. Uh, playing around with all that, trying to figure out the best way to mount up front. And I got a whole bunch of measurements now, and I got a good understanding of where all this is going. Uh, I just got to start building the pieces to it now. But what I'm going to do here tonight, I'm going to uh, take some measurements. I'm going to draw up a chassis rail to see what it's going to look like and what changes I would have to make. I'm just going to measure everything off of this car here now, measure off the floor, draw up, and uh, I'll draw a chassis rail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw all that on the top of my bench. All I, I cleaned off top of the bench, everything is there now, and I realized that from here 
to here is the distance I need. So I have some soapstone there now, and I'm going to use this as my floor line, and I'm going to measure up from that, and I'm going to draw it full scale on this here. I'm going to mount the front over here, I'm going to make the spring mounts, every neck got to mount over here, and then I'm just going to come up and draw a frame rail and see if I can figure out something that I like, and uh, you know, size up other things. The biggest thing I find with cars like this here, when you're building a car like this, a lot of it is you're thinking about it a lot, but until you actually start putting pieces together, uh, you start seeing things and you figure things out. Uh, you got to realize, like, you know, there's nothing on this car. That's Jeep Springs, okay? So there's nothing factory on this car. It's 2x3 chassis. So I'm not following any uh, guidelines or anything. I'm making it up as I go. So I'm going to sit down now, take some pile of measurements, and start drawing up some chassis rails. All right, so this is what I've come up with. Uh, but after spending a couple of days now, uh, picking around at the car, figuring things out, getting measurements, uh, finding the best angles, doing some research online, talking to different guys on it, uh, of what to come up with. I've played around here now, and what I've done, um, like, <clears throat> I drew it out on top of the bench. I've done this because I haven't got a big enough piece of cardboard to draw it out on. I wanted to get my height here. What I got done here, is this here is ground level, okay? So I drew up to the heights that I want. This is the center line of the tire. And there's the, the width of the tire and there's the height of the tire. The height, the tire is the same height as the rail. And uh, like it comes down to the ground here. That would be the, the housing, the two dimensional. Okay, so I measured up from the ground over there to figure out where I wanted it to. And that was the measurement I come up with. Um, then I just start coming forward. All this up here, I just guesstimated that. This here is an anti-roll bar kit that I picked up and I had to find a place to mount that that has to be mounted on top of the housing and I wanted to put that in a place where I could possibly get at it easy enough. Uh, I didn't want it behind because back here I got to have a shock going behind it. So the shock will be back here straight up and down. I haven't decided on a shock yet. Um, so I wanted a place for that. So the top leg had to be long enough that I could actually mount this forward of the rear end housing. So it'll be out of my way. Up here in the front, you see me made up this little template here of uh, the bracket. This is what I come up with. I was going to come up first and tip forward. This square block here is the chassis rail in the car, this cross member here now, okay? So we're looking at this from the side. Uh, this bracket is going to fit inside of it. I got to notch out that there to, uh, to fit this in because I need the clearances on the back side to clear probably haven't told you a lot of this stuff, the Caltrack kit. I picked up a full Caltrack system um, for, the, for the car. I haven't got the bars or anything here. I'm just using this piece here for now for test fitting. Um, I had in my head to make a set of these, but by the time I bought all the clevis ends, bought the plate, bought steel, price steel has gone through the roof. Uh, I could justify the amount of time I had to put in to make them and the materials, what it was going to cost me with materials. I'm willing to say... By the time I had it all done, I would have been into these cal tracks, the homemade ones, for more than uh, the than buying a set and landing them. And what I mean by being the more, I would have had a lot of time in them. And the cost of materials now for the plate is not cheap around here. So I just said, well, I said I'll bite the bullet and buy a set. And same with this thing here. Um, this here, I couldn't even justify making that because it comes with some pretty. Uh, interesting pieces okay so when it comes to bracketry and the clevis ends and the, the pipe all that type of stuff there everything is there for that kit and uh, it was just cheap to buy that than it was to make it um, so <clears throat> up here in front again this is the notch section and this is the hole section I went and added another hole uh, because I, I want to join it right in I want to keep this whole place this whole thing boxed in and uh, give it lots of strength up front that's the reason why I'm run a 2 by 3 behind the rail like this here. Uh, and this will be notched out to fit in behind it. So that will give it strength from behind. It will give strength back to where I notched out this section here. And uh, then it will just go straight up. I was This one here I was a bit hesitant about because I had it run forward first. and No, I just got to bite the bullet and this way it's got to run. It's got to run uphill like that. That will give me lots of clearances, lots of work. Room underneath the car. I can probably put mufflers up there. I don't know. Or a muffler, one or the other. But I got this drawn out here now. 
and I got everything figured out. Back here's where the slider will go. It'll probably be mounted back here further because there's droop on this spring right now. Uh, set this up. You can see I got it set up there. This is the way this will work. This will mount in a hole there. Okay. And then it'll be mounted on a back rail back there. And then I got adjustability on the front spring that I can move the spring upboard. See? And change the angle of the spring. It works out to be from the fifth hole. Well, I say that top hole is going to be zero. Uh, and the bottom hole is seven degrees. That would be this angle here from this spring eye to that spring eye. The top of that, if you measured that angle there, right now that would be zero degrees. And then when I move it down here, that angle is seven degrees. So, uh, and then I'll have to adjust, have to make this adjustable. So this is at seven degrees. That's the way that has to be mounted, like so. This has to be parallel to the, the, the line that goes passes through the top of this here, the center line of that. Lot to figure out, might be confusing to you. I'll be going over all this as I build it all again. I'm just giving you a quick rundown of what I'm building here. So my next step is to uh, start building all these pieces. So I'm gonna make templates of this frame rail now from cardboard, like I've done before. And uh, then I'm gonna turn around and make a new one of these here, template of that, and I'm just gonna start cutting all this stuff out. First thing I'm doing here is all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a bunch of three inch strips to start with and then I'm going to use the template on the bench. I'm going to mark the angles, cut them off and piece this all together with the white cardboard. That way I got a template to go by and uh, these are at the exact width of the 2x3 frame rail so that when I cut it on the angle I know the angle it got to be on. So I'm going to go ahead now and strip them out. So this is all I got done. I got a bunch of strips cut out and this is all I'm doing. I'm up here now and I'm laying it in the place of the rail. And you can see I got the angles marked, clearly marked. So all I'm doing now is I'm laying this on top of it, and I'll cut that off there. And that'll be that piece. And then I'll move on and do this piece, and, I, and so on and so on. I know for a fact that this angle here is going to be the same as this, so I'll start my first cut off of that, see? I was playing around with it out here. I was using the chalk markings and drawing it out, and I was finding my angles weren't lining up properly. Uh, because of this chalk drawings, it would throw everything off. As long as I got my heights, and this is parallel to this here. I was doing all right. So what, how I come about to do cut the angles proper is up here. I knew where this here went. This was the straight line. So when I lay this across this here, like so, I put that on the right angle. I take the point where the two cardboards meet here, where the two cardboards meet there, and I take a, a utility knife and I just cut it off. And that's how I get the proper angles on both of them. So that way I know I'm going in the right direction with it all. And as you can see, I got everything done here so far. So I'm just going to cut this one here now, and uh, I'll move on to the next one. As you can see, I just cut straight from the outer corner here and the right corner here. So when I remove this piece, and I remove this piece, now I got my angle right. So I got a real nice angle going along there, and that'll fit together like so. So here I got them all cut out and all set up. Over here now, I'll try to explain what I got going on over here. Uh, this here will be the chassis rail passing through the car, this one here, okay? Uh, that passes through there, this will be notched around it, okay? But this here, when you lay this down, this will be notched into this, like so. Now this is, will be a box section that will be probably about this wide, about five, about five inches wide, and that will be cut, notched out of, this here will be notched and this will slide into that there. That will give me room for everything to rotate and move inside this box. And then that will mount here. That one is a bit tricky to make, because i got to cut all the angles off it. But like basically that will go like so, there. And then all that will be welded together in one piece, this will be all welded. So it will be a nice strong membrane right there for uh, the setup. And then I can probably run a roll cage down to here somewhere and uh, off it somehow. But that's basically the, the frame design and the angles, everything that I need there is right here now. So I'm gonna take these now and I'm gonna go ahead and hollow some two by three and start chopping up uh, some pieces and make uh, each section of the frame rail. This is all I'm doing, I'm laying the cardboard template on it, marking it off, cutting the angles off. Come over here now and I'll mark it off, I'll cut the angles off and I'll go on to the next piece, next piece. I got a few cut there now few of them there now, so I'll go cut the rest of them there now. Well, a few hours later, I got these all cleaned up. It's good enough for that. I went and beveled all the edges. 
on all the pieces. I have two rails cut out. One here and I got one just laid out there roughly on the template on the table. So you can see roughly where it goes together. What I'll do, I'll repeat the same process I did on the front rails. I'll weld that section on, I'll weld that to the bench, I'll weld that to that, and I'll move on, I'll move on, and so on, so on. I'll weld this here together, uh, like do the sides on it, and then what I'll do is I'll set up the other rail on top of that, and weld it onto that, and repeat the process so two of the rails are together, and then I'll weld up everything on the rails, take them apart, and have the rails done. These front sections were a bit tricky. I still got to trim them up a bit, you can see they're a little bit high. I gotta trim a bit of that off and a bit long on the bottom, that's no big deal. I'm going to dress the ends of these here, cap them off, and dress this here so it looks like it's just rolled off the edge. I'll do that before I weld it on, but I'm gonna weld all these sections here first, have them done, and then I'll do these last. Because I want to do some fitting and everything on them, because they uh, they're not what you call a perfect alignment there. <laughs> it's a bit tricky trying to cut both sides of the metal at the one time using the template. And if the template's a little bit high, right, and you cut on the other side of the line, well, you know what you're going to run into. So, I'm going to go ahead now and start tacking and welding this on the bench, and start welding this all, all together. So here's what I got done. I went ahead, and I welded the bottom one on the bench, went along, and I tack welded on, fitting each piece. I made sure this was parallel to this. I put a long straight piece of beam across here and measured up from that so both of them are parallel. And then I worked along here and I tack welded them here and here and on the other side in two spots. Then I come back and I welded them on. I welded up there and up there and up there and went on the opposite side and welded that up. Then I repeated the process again and laid that one on top of it. And then I squared it up. I just squared it up that way, right? And then made sure it lined up good here. Tack welded that on, done the same process, fit that one, tacked it on. I had to grind a few to make them fit. Tacked that one on, tacked that one on, then welded this one on the inside and out. That one, they're the same way, and that one. Now, bolt rails are made, and I got them welded pretty good. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to weld the tops on this side here. Then I'm going to cut her from the table, leave two of these welded together, weld the other side here. And then, when, and then I'm going to let two of them cool down. When two of them cools down, I'll break two of them apart. And all i got left to do is weld the inside. But before I goes too far with it, i got to get these figured out. i got to get these trimmed up. problem with it is, is that if you look at them, that's not the one. This is the bad one here. Here you go. See the way that's all gone crooked there? i got to get that so it stands up straight and whatnot, right? Trim it up. Get both of them looking the same. And they fit straight there like so. That's where they fit too. And then I can turn around and weld them. I like to have them welded on before I take it off the bench. So I'll fit them up. You can see the way this has got to go here. So I'll trim this up, fit this up, get this where I like it. And then uh, I'll weld that on before I let everything else go. So I went ahead and I got these welded on the top. I've been letting it cool there now. I'm not going to remove it from the bench yet because i got to still put these ends on it. And that's what I've been working on. Uh, trimming these up so that they fit on a... Uh, so they're basically the same. Trimming them up so the two of them looks the same, got the same angles on them. Both locations works good for them. Like so, right? Like that. Now what I'm getting ready to do now, I'll cut out these two little pieces. I'm gonna weld these on here, have that done and dress this so it just looks like the metal has come down around and I'll weld it on the inside as well. So then all I got to do is just weld it down around here. Because this is the way this is gonna fit on the chassis in the car. This is going to come down, I'll weld it along here, this won't be open, so I'm going to cap these over, grind all this up, make them look like uh, it's a factory style piece on it, or you know, it looks right, and uh, that way it'll look nice when it's on the car. So two of them are pretty well ready now, this is the last piece i got to do, I had to trim up these here, sections, make all these the same height, on both of them, as you can see, this is the inlay for the... Um, uh, for the basically the spring pocket to go into and this is notched out for the chassis so I'm gonna go ahead and cap these ends now all I did welded it on the outside welded it on the inside and I just took it and I dressed it up so it looks nice then when it's mounted on the car that's the way it'll be mounted it'll look good well, I got ahead of myself I had to go do a test fit and trim them so they'd fit and everything but I got them front horns all welded on, uh, 
dressed them all up, got them fitting all good. So that's where basically where they're going to be going to, like so. Look over there. And I got to notch out that front section there for the uh, pocket for the spring. But uh, you get a rough idea of the way the frame is going to be shaped. When it comes back here, I got to make two mounting plates now to go here. Two plates that'll go across here that'll uh, I can uh, weld this to, and this will be mounted to the car. I'm going to put a cross member across here eventually, but I'm not quite sure yet where I'm going to put it to because I want to put fuel tank in here and I want to drop it through the floor a certain amount so I can uh, get more trunk space. But uh, this is only temporary, this is not exactly where it's going. I haven't decided where how wide the rails are going to be. I just want to get a test fit to see how it fit in there. So now I got to go up and I got to start cutting out these front sections now. Start making up the front spring pockets. So here I got some quarter plate, six inches wide. Now these are the templates that I made up for to mount the front spring off of, and they're three inches wide, so I can get two pieces out of it. I was going to use the plasma cutter, see if I can make this quick, but if I use the plasma cutter here, I'm losing it. I need every bit of this, so just the thickness of the blade I'm going to lose, and I'll pick that up on the back side when I goes to weld it. Um, so I'm going to cut all this with zip blades. So I don't know how long it's going to take me to do it, but... I'll take my time and I'll cut these two out and we'll go from there. But I gotta cut out four of these, then I gotta cut out two back sections, and then I gotta cut out the four uprights for the, the rear um, slider. Well, that wasn't half bad. I went through four cut wheels and the old grinder, she's a bit warm, but I just took my time with her and I got four pieces, this four pieces cut out here. Four pieces cut out here, two pieces cut out here, and two pieces cut out here. I am not going to get into right now explaining what these pieces are for, because uh, I'm going to be individually building these pieces, and when I do, you'll see what they're for. I'm going to start off now with the, these pieces here, which are the uprights. This thing here. So what I got to do now is I got to mark out the holes, and I got to drill a bunch of holes. So I got to drill holes in all them. How many holes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six fours, twenty-four holes. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna try to put two together and two together and drill them through that way. I'll probably end up doing that, but I'm gonna mark them out first. And I'm gonna mark one out and drill it one eight. Uh, one eight holes. And then I'm gonna use that one to mark all the rest of them with. So that way I know that they're all the exact same. And uh, I'll probably put two together and then put the other two together so then it's only six holes or 12 holes I gotta drill and uh, get that done. Well that's been sat over by the compressor now for a few years, haven't used it much. Um, I got treaded bolts in a few spots on the bench so I just bolted it to the top of the bench for, for temporary so I can use it. Uh, I wanted to have straighter holes so I went and what I went and did is I marked out the distance that I have uh, which are an inch apart and a wrench in. So I scribed them and then I center punched them. And then I went ahead and I used the 1-8 drill bit and that there and drilled straight through them to get them marked. Now I have two clamped together and uh, I'm going to drill through the second one. Now you could probably do well the four of them together and do the four of them. I've done that before, it's too hard on the drill. This is like a little cheap drill press. I'm just trying to do this. So the machinery that I got, which is, you know, just a simple little drill and a cheap little drill press can handle the thing, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill through this one here uh, into the second one. And then I'll have two that are fully marked. And then I'm going to turn around and take two of these. I'm going to take these two then, separate this up here, and take one of each and weld them to these plates here so they're permanently, they don't move around. And then I'll end up drilling through them there into the new plates. And then I'll go up the up sizes for the larger holes that I need to to get the, the bolt hole sizes that I need. So I'll drill them out now, just uh, using the old uh, battery ba power drill. Started to use the hand drilling through them, and I started thinking about it. If I go right through just one, this one here, I can cut all this, and I can probably put the holes on an angle. So all I did is I just drilled in enough that I could mark the holes. Now I'm gonna take them up here on a drill press and drill them out this way, so that way I know that the holes are all through and straight through. So I went ahead and I took the second one and mounted it on another plate 
and then I welded it on. I squared it up and welded it on. I did the same with the other one. Well then, so now I got the holes in this one, and I got the holes in this one. So I'm gonna go ahead now, drill right through two of these here, and I'm just gonna start bringing up the bit sizes, the sizes that I want. So I'll just basically uh, come up to that, whatever size it is. Probably gonna be that one, I'd say. Get them drilled out. Well, look what I've been at. A few hours there, let me tell you. But the old drill worked out pretty good. Never had no issues with it. I went and changed the gearing up in the top and uh, it worked a lot better. And I tried out my new hole saw. Wanted to see how that worked. It's not bad, right? But I got the plates cut out. I got them all drilled. As you see, all the holes are there now. These are the front mounts and these are the rear mounts. I'll show you everything. I went and cut a couple of uh, holes in the middle just for decoration more than anything else. Wanted to see how the hole saw worked. But now these are two plates, like I said before, I got these welded together. So I'm going to dress these up a bit now before I take them apart. And then I can start piecing these all together with the other pieces that I got over on the bench. I got to clean up here first. So, that was the big undertaking, getting them all drilled out. I drilled them out, I went to one eighth to quarter to, I think it's a half inch. And that's the order I went in, and I used WD-40, and I had some old hydraulic jack oil here, and I haven't got no... Uh, the proper oil for it, but I used WD-40 and ran out of that at the end of it, and the old jack oil bailed, bailed me out. But uh, I got all the holes drilled, uh, worked out best kind. So I got that. That was probably the biggest undertaking I was concerned about, you know, saying, because you can think about all the holes, and all these here, I drilled them three times. I prefer to do it that way. I not wanted to, to just take a drill bit and try to drill out my hole. I like coming up in my drill bit sizes. It's a lot easier on the drill bit. And it doesn't have to cut as much because each bit only has to cut on the outer edge It doesn't have to cut down through the middle as much, right? So uh, one eighth quarter half inch So you can count all them holes here now and multiply it by three to tell you how many times I drilled them holes <laughs> Anyway, let's get this cleaned up and uh, start putting it together So the first part I'm gonna do I'm gonna start at the back. I'm gonna build the back pieces first if you look at these here They're cut on an angle, okay? I got them cut on an angle like that and offset holes as well because I'm putting what they call these sliders in them, okay? Now these sliders, for people that don't know what they are, they replace the rear shackle on a leaf spring setup and it allows the spring to slide forward. So when you launch the car, the, car, the slider will slide forward. Now these are mounted this way on the car. I'm just showing you upside down. And that's how they work. Now, what I got built here uh, are adjustable rear slider angles so I can raise and lower my leaf springs um, to change uh, a number of different uh, functions on the rear end. It's adjustability so I can work on my traction. So these here are mounted to these here and these wrap around the chassis rail. I got a piece of rail here I'm going to use to do it. So what I'm going to do first is just go around clean up these edges and make sure they're the same before I break two of them apart on both of them and then I'm going to bolt them together I mount them on that there and set them up so I can weld them onto these brackets here. So I'll go ahead and get all that done and show you. So I got that tack welded in place. I wanted to show you before I welded it up. I just bolted it onto two by three here. And when I got done, I got a piece of 18 gauge. I got put in there. You can see it here. And I got that clamped into place. So that'll give it a little bit of a space in here. So this will slide a lot easier. Because when you start applying heat to this through welding, this is going to want to draw. But this is all this is set up like now. So when this is on the car, this will be set up straight, okay? Like so. So that way, the slider will be parallel to the two eyes and the leaf spring. Uh, eventually, what I'll end up doing is I'll end up drilling through the rails here and find two locations that I can actually bolt to. And then I can move it up and down on the rail. I can tighten it up that way there. But temporarily for now, because I don't know where my spring is going to lie in here with all the weight and everything on it, it should be about three quarters of the way back. Uh, on the slider when it's at the uh, ride height so I'm not going to do none of that till later on and so this doing it this way here now I can just mount it in the car leave it alone for now and then I can adjust it later and then set it up and I'll just uh, punch two holes and drill two holes in the rails so that I can bolt them on that way so I'm going to go ahead now and weld these up and uh, get this one done and move on and get the second one done 
So I got two of them done. They're all welded up. I'm letting them cool down there now uh, with the, the steel and everything still in them. I welded them on the inside and on the outside. I just ran the four corners. I didn't think it was a need to weld the whole thing solid. Uh, most of them brackets, when you build by them and put together, they're never solid welded. So while I'm waiting for that to cool off, I went ahead and I started cleaning up the two front sections. I uh, went and grinded up these ones here. Well, how I done that is uh, I clamped it in the vise. You can see where it's welded together. And I just grinded them so both of them were the same size, same flat, rounded out of corners and stuff like that. I don't need to round out that corner because it's the back. But this is all I done. And by grinding this flush, that weakens this weld. So when you bring it over, you just tap it on the bench and it'll actually uh, come apart quite easy, right? And so I got this one done. I rounded out the edge here, the corner edge. So that looked nice because this is going to be st stood on the car like so. So that bottom edge there is not something you're going to clobber your head off of. And I went ahead and made these two little uh, 18 gauge uh, shims that I'm going to put in between the bolts. And I got these two bars here that are belong to the Caltrack bars that goes through this. And this is the distance that uh, these actually bolt up solid to these plates. So I'm going to put the washer on it, space on it, put that on so there's a little bit of a thing. Run the bolts through it and bolt them together, basically with longer bolts that I got over there. And then I can, I, what I got to do is I box them in. This is the back and that's the top there. So then I'm going to weld them on and, and uh, have them made. So I'm going to go ahead now and get this one all cleaned up, ready to go. Uh, I can only do one of these at a time because I only got two of these. And uh, so I'm going to set this one up here now, bolt it together and start welding it together. So there it is, all bolted together, got the shims in there, and I got the plates tack welded in place here now, this is the top and this is the bottom, and this is the way it will sit on the car and the leaf spring will fit in through here and you can adjust it up and down to get the different heights that you want, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead now and weld that one up, and then when that cools down, I'll let that cool, then I'm going to go ahead and I'll weld up the other one. So there it is all welded up. Just so you know, I'm welding this uh, with uh, CO2, and I'm still using O23 wire. It'd probably be better if you had O30 wire on this. It's just that that's what's in my machine. And there's my settings. I got the settings turned right up, pretty well as high as they can go. I played around with it a little bit up on the top, just so I get the, the nice crackling sound out of the welder when I was welding it. But uh, I still get nice speeds. I just had to go slower with the O23. Because uh, you got to get a bit of build up there, right? Just needs more wire to put into it, but that's fine. And there's the two brackets all unbolted, and the little spacer worked great. I think that fits right in the right nice stuff. Yeah, in the bolt of them. See? So they're ready to go. And so now all I got to do is I got to let this cool down. I'm letting it cool naturally, not going to air cool it, nothing like that. I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, that's what I've done with these here. I never took them apart, they were cold. So uh, they're still hot there. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to go grab it at lunch and uh, come back and make the other one. So there you have it. They're all done. Got a fair bit of time into them. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I made them. That's the fun part. Um, I just use a regular cheap drill press and an angle grinder with a uh, cheap hole saw for steel and a MIG welder. That's basically how I made all this. No fancy tools, just whatever I had lying around to make them. <clears throat> so now that I got them made, uh, I hauled everything out here now. You probably remember this rear end. I've done this a good while ago, how to shorten a, a rear end. And that was the rear end for this car. So I got that hauled out here now and I got some U-bolts and some uh, mounts for the springs, my wheels, and two chassis rails. What I'm trying to figure out now is how far apart I'm going to have my chassis rails. So in order to do that, i got to bolt the whole thing together uh, to get an idea of where the tires to on the wheel and where you know the bottom plates are to for the uh, shock mounts, all that type of stuff. So I figured it would be a lot easier just haul that on the floor, assemble the whole works, and then I can figure out how wide i got to make that chassis rail. Well, there it is all bolted together. The wheels and everything. I've been playing around with it a bit here now. I got the springs figured out. I got about an inch between the spring and the tire. So I went and modified the, the mounts to, uh, to go into place like that. So I got the same distance from here. 
I think it's uh, 8 inches to the inside here out to the flange on both sides. So what I got done, the rear end is upside down now. This is the bottom of the rear end. And I just got it hung here. And I got two of them tack welded in place. Uh, they're at zero degrees, same as the pinion right now. I, that'll change later. I only got this done now just for mock-up. I just got them tack welded in place so I can actually change that after the fact. But I need to do this so I can figure everything out. So I went and mounted two of them and got it figured out. Then I figured the center, from center to center on two of them there. I had the number wrote down there somewhere. And uh, what I've done then, and now I know how wide the center line on my two rails are. So I can actually go up over now. What I'm going to plan on doing is laying this on the bench. And I'm going to set it all up and have it so that the center line is the same front and rear. And put a couple of cross members in it like I did on the front. And square all that up so I can go ahead and uh, set it up so I can put it into the car. And you can see here now, this is just a rough estimate of how the little mount fits. I got to dial down a bit better for that to fit. And I got to notch a section of the rail out for that uh, pocket to fit in place. So now that I got the rails figured out, the distance between the two of them, I'm going to go ahead and make the two frame rails that I can put in the car. So there it is. All I did is I welded this one on the bench. I squared it up, made it 90 degrees, the whole nine yards. And I put it out to the edge of the bench and I welded it on. Then I just measured over here the distance that I needed. Stop right there. Everything I was just about to show you was a waste of time. I welded it together, put it in the car, and it wasn't square in the car. I thought the car was off. No, it wasn't the car. So, I, you know, it's kind of hard to get measurements on welded points on a, on a frame rail. So, I measured up the car, square up the car, the car is not on square. Uh, surprisingly enough, with the, all the bottom cut out of it. So, I figured that, uh, I started sizing things up. When this is mounted in the car, one side is higher than the other, and one side is off kilter to the other. I don't know what I was doing when I done this, but hey, you live and you learn, and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut these points out of it, and I'm going to put one rail in, because I know it's where they got to go, I know the distance they got to be apart, and I'm going to put the front spring pockets in first, and then I'm going to put one rail in, square it up in the car, put it where it has to go, because I know it's where they got to go now, and uh, then when I lose one extra in place, I'll put the second rail in place on the other side, and square that up off of this one here. Ah, uh, you live and you learn. So, going back to this again now to get started on the pockets. I went and put two straight edges on this here. And because I can't measure across the housing here to do this. So I put two straight edges on and put them on the center of the pins there. Center of the pins there. And I measured them up. So two of them were the same measurement. And that's how you can tell that they're parallel then. Doesn't matter if they're square. As long as they're parallel, that distance is the same through all that. Uh, what I found out that it was 30 and a quarter inches from center bolt to center bolt, okay? That's the distance that I needed. So I'll come over here. I went and picked up some treaded rod. And I set the boxes up on the bench. And I put some nuts and everything on it, bolted together. And I measured them up so that they were 30 and a quarter inches apart, okay, to the center, okay? Now, it's kind of hard to find the center of this here. You can sit down and fool around and bolt the outside edge of this here. To the outside of the edge of this here will be the same measurement as the center. Same with the outside here and the outside here. So all I did was I measured from the outside here over to the outside here. I got 30 and a quarter inches. I got 30 and a quarter inches. Put that in the right spot. There you go. 30 and a quarter inches. And then I reversed it. I got 30 and a quarter inches. 30 and a quarter inches. So now I know that if I measure from the center of here to the center of here, it's 30 and a quarter inches where my spring got to go. So now that I got this little jig made up, I'm going to use this here to mount it in the car. I'm going to lay it in place, center this up in the car, mark out where I got to cut the rails, and get these installed. So I got them, that rail notched out. I got the piece out of it, uh, the size of the box. I got the box laid in place. Got them clamped in with two pairs of boy scripts, and I went around took measurements of everything. Uh, I based it off parallel parallel to this cross member here because this is uh, level in the car. Uh, the car was not, uh, sitting on four stands now, which is not exactly level, so I measured it there, which is uh, 0.7 of a degree. 
and then I've done the bar across here which is 0.7 degree and then I basically went off everything else and leveled everything off and make sure everything was right measured my distances here made sure my center line was the same made all them after double checking and triple checking it now because I'm second guessing myself after that last uh, uh, mess I did <laughs> but that's all a part of it sometimes you know anytime you're building cars like this from scratch you're going to overthink things and sometimes you're going to get yourself into predicaments you just got to walk away from it and get a clear head and come back at it again and that's all i did so now that i got this straightened away i'm going to go ahead and weld two of them in there so i got them welded in place they're solid i got the rods removed i had to cut one rod to get it out but uh, i got them out the alignment rods and i went ahead now and i start fitting the other rail up in place and played around with it and figured out my measurements back here where it had to sit on the back back here you see i got it marked out center line and the uh outer rail and stuff like that figured it'd be a lot easier and a lot better to do it this way uh i don't know what i was thinking when i was doing the pipe thing i was hoping for it to be square but it's very hard to do it with a shape like this the way this goes up and goes back because as much as you weld these together uh the angles are a little tiny bit off and I've been playing around with it there, trying to, I got that there parallel to this here. So, uh, all that works out. And I got it all fitting up there, so that's ready to go in there. But I want to make the plates now for back here to mount to the back of the car. I got them cut out, I got to trim them up, I got to trim a bit of this off so the plate can slide down behind it so I can weld it onto the back of the car. And then this plate will fit to that and it'll weld onto that. There will be a cross brace put into this after. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to do it right yet because uh, I want to have a spot to if I ever need a parachute or trailer hitch or something like that there's going to be a cross member put across there but I'm not going to do it yet so I just got to make the plates for this and uh, get them fit in place so I can actually uh, weld them onto the back of the car so I can get the rail laid in place so I got the plates made up as you can see I'm tack welded in place and of course I got that rail fitting in place and I measured it all up, I got it leveled, everything, I'll show you all that in a minute. But I got the plates made, and what I got done out here, is I got four holes drilled in the outer body, that'll plug well to the middle of the plate, so that'll be all straight away. Now that I got that one done, I went ahead and I put the rail in it, and I leveled the rail up, I made sure it was vertical this way, and what I was going off of, because, like, I haven't got this on a chassis table, and all I've been doing is, I got it mounted on this rack, okay? And this rack sits at ride height where I want the car. So if I measured up, I had the front all squared up and straightened up. If I measured this here, whatever that is degrees vertical, I would have put this on it as well. Now, it's pretty close. It's not a degree off. It's probably like, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 degrees off of 90 degrees uh, from this rail. Like when I put it on this rail, it's probably like 0.4. So I come back here and I put this rail at 0.4. So that way both of the rails are the same and the same thing. So I went ahead and I put that rail in there and tack welded it in place. Then I went ahead and got ahead of myself and I fit up the other one. Got that all straightened away and tack welded that in place. Put the plate on the back side there. Now all I did here is I measured it. So I got it measured to the center line. I done the same thing here. I measured from the outside here to the outside or the inside here and got my measurement which is 30 and a quarter which will put me center line of 30 and a quarter for my springs uh then i turn around and I ran a level across there and ran the level to compare to that cross member there and i think that's 0.7 and this is 0.6 of a degree so you know <laughs> that's close enough for me i also played around with like the level a lot of times when you're at this stuff you almost got to eyeball things like when you're looking up through the car you'd pick another point farther up in the car and you eyeball your, your cross members off it. So if you look at that there, you can see the level, and you see the two front uh, cross members up there. And as I come down, you can see that two of them pretty well disappear at the same time. The cross member, and they can go right on up to the front rail. And you can look at that here, size up the end of the rail there. It's good to do things like that, and that way you'll, get, you'll know whether you're square or not, because you know, if you have not on a regular garage floor, it's great if you got a frame table. I don't have a frame table. Um, you know, so I build everything. I've always built things off the floor, and I square it off the car. I start with a square point, and I just work back through it, and I use them points to build the back part of the car. Right? A frame table will be ten times better, uh, but, you know, you make do with what you got. But I got the two rails in her. Uh, I've got them fitting up, 
And the distance up here, same thing between the rails. It's 30 and a quarter inches. So they're all tacked welded in place. Uh, vertical this way, it's 89.7 degrees, and that's 89.6 degrees. Vertical this way. So that there is vertical to that, and that one there is the same thing, 89 and uh, 7, I think 89.7 degrees, which is almost 90 degrees, right? So it's not even a half a degree out off of 90. And that got a lot to do with where the garage is set up. Uh, like I was saying, this is not 90 degrees because I measured off of that. So this is 90 degrees to the frame. Right? But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead now and I want to get all this welded in. And we're getting pretty close now to making a roller out of this. Because all I got to do once that's welded in is then I got to assemble all the back end of it. And let's hope that the center pin is in the middle. I may have to um, like off center the center pin on the rear end a small bit or something. I'm hoping I don't. Uh, I took it into consideration. One of the reasons why I moved that into there was that reason. And people are going to say, well, why don't you move that bar forward? Because I was the, the roll cage is going to mount right here. And I wanted it back as far as I can. I wanted to spring forward as far as I could. And it's like, ah, it's a bit of difference. But I think it's going to look nice. And it's got a nice strength to it all because it's all caged in around all the frame. Everything is wrapped around the spring mount. So it's going to be pretty solid there, right? So I'm going to go ahead now and get that all welded in. I got it all welded up, all the chassis and everything got it all welded in place there now. That's solidly done. I went back then and I went and finished off the plates on the side, welded them to the rockers. Uh, out the back, you saw me welding them up as well. I had to finish up some welds up on the front here as well. Finish them up and weld the plates on the rockers there. Figured I'd get all that done now. And then I went ahead and I cut the cross members, stole makeshift cross members out of the chassis. And also cut the ones that were holding the body together. They're there a long time. So the whole thing is done, so that's basically the entire chassis now, front to back. Now the bottom side of all these here got to be still welded. I'm going to do that because I'm taking the body off of this and uh, going to be flipping it upside down and possibly putting the uh, chassis on a rotisserie so I can weld it up better. And basically I'm going to paint it. I use, I'll always paint the chassis before I uh, actually finish them. I'll, like, I'll paint it and then put it back in the car and I'll put the floors in after. Makes the, uh, life a lot easier after the fact. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead now and start setting up the uh, the rear end and get the leaf springs in it and see how far my center bolts are off. Uh, hopefully I'm close and uh, and hopefully I can make a roll out of this. So let's get the rear end in this now. 
Cage, you're not, is it? Yeah. No problem. Pieces are perfect. Well, that's it. She's a roller. Had to uh, get the springs mounted in it. They're only temporary. A lot of stuff I got done here is temporarily done. Uh, I got to put the aluminum bushings in the front and in the rear uh, on the springs okay, for the Caltrack unit to fit inside everything. And because it won't work with just the, the, the bushing that's there now. So uh, I just got it all just mocked up like I, I got done here now. Uh, I was amazed the center bolt worked out really well. I figured I was going to have to center that differently But uh, she lined up really well in the wheel well I, uh, I did a good job guesstimating at that. I haven't got these mounted permanently Okay, because this here has to go back further. I'm not going to bother with none of that Because that's just sliding back and forth. What I'm going to do when I finds out the place that I wants to put that I'm going to drill two holes through the chassis rails for that to bolt down to and uh, all it'll do is it'll move up and down on the frame rail at five degrees so or i can change it or whatnot right but for now i just got to clamp it over the top like that there just enough so i can uh, move it back because by right step bolt there should be roughly three quarters of the way back for this to work properly so i'm uh, just this is just temporary kind of mocked up like it like this here right want to see how much spring would go into her how low she'd sit uh, I got to put in the fourth hole up right now, which I'm happy with because there's lots of adjustment there now. I'm setting this up right in the middle there, and it's at a very steep angle right now. So I got to uh, play around with that, but that's only minor stuff. But I'm very pleased with it. It sits just like the way it did on the rack. Very pleased with it. Happy with, it, with the progress I made on this. Uh, I got a lot of things to do now to the back back here. I got to put shock mounts in. I got to put um, the uh, anti-sway bar or roll bar in the back of it. I got to put a cross member for that and rig that up on the rear end. Um, there's a number of things got to be done. And of course, then I got to start building the roll cage. And I got to mount the seat. I'm going to mount the motor on that next, get that figured out. So I'll have that mounted where it's supposed to go, the motor plate and the, uh, I got a mid plate picked up for it. So that'll go there. Uh, I can't put a motor plate on it. I'm gonna run it off the side of the engine like motor mounts. More, the reason why I got the mid plate in it is more along the lines of being able to pull the transmission out of it or pull the motor out of it without taking the other one out of it, let it hanging down. That's more or less the thing. Like I should have a motor plate with the mid plate, but that's all I can do. 
uh, in order to have a motor place, I'm going to eliminate the alternator and I'm trying to keep this functional so it's like a street car. Um, I'm not worried about making it race ready and stuff like that. I'm trying to build everything for a street car. But uh, that's it now. I've been uh, the whole month now trying to get this done, spending time here in the day, time in the evenings, uh, figuring things out, trying to get uh, everything ironed out, what I want to get done. Oh, and there's my clearances on my tire. I got lots on the quarter panel. I still got to put rollers on the back of this now, but I still got lots of room here on the wheel wells on both sides. Lots of room on the inside there for the tires on both sides. Okay. So I'm pleased with that. And I got to put a rear end brace on this as well, drain plug uh, on the bottom, a filler plug on the top. Uh, just trying to do it, make life a lot easier. But other than that, I think that's pretty well it for this. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> step away from this one for a little bit now. I'm going to pick at this one here in the evenings. And what not. I spent a lot of time at it now, so I'm going to be getting started on the wagon next. I'm going to bring that down and bring that on the floor. I wanted to get this as a roller. That was my goal by the end of January to get this as a roller. And I got it there. <laughs> the day's the 31st. So, <laughs> well, you could see how everything was fitting together and the few troubles I run into and how I designed and built everything. But now you can see how I'd build the chassis. This section here in the middle, that'll be cut out at a later date. Uh, I might just cut the center out of it with a loop there. Or I might cut the whole thing out. I'm not quite sure yet. But I'll leave that for now. Because I'll have to put a transmission mount up here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to mount the seat. Get the seat figured out where that's going to go. Right. But yeah, I'm pleased with this. The little thing is starting to take shape here now. It's starting to look like something. Her main components of making it a roller are in it. I'm going to start uh, fine-tuning everything now and getting everything set up. I'll work it in now between jobs because I'm going to get at this one. A lot of a vast. I'm getting back at Wendy's. Don't, for, uh, don't worry about that. Um, that year I got exhaust and I'm going to paint it and get it running. But I didn't want to start on that right now because when that car is painted, I want it finished and I want it out of the garage because... I find it's very hard to have a very nice car in this garage. So when that's done, it'll go out and I'll be put in storage when it's finished. And uh, but and so I'm just waiting for that. I'm gonna get at uh, Ben's hood here now. So the hood has been leaning up against the wall, or you've probably seen it. I'm gonna get to do some work on that. So I'm going to uh, I got a couple other small videos I'm gonna be doing in between there and whatnot take up time because the hood might take a bit of work to it to complete but anyway this is it full chassis old two by three chassis this is the way they built it back in the 70s a lot of the pro stock cars the pintos and the dodge colts and everything this is the way they were built much along these lines i always loved the 70s little pro stock cars and uh you know, I built a few cars like this over the years, and I just, you know, a lot of fellows are saying, you know, you should build a tubular chassis and chrome molly and TIG welded and all this type of stuff. I'm old school. I just like the old school way of doing things. This is the way I've always wanted to build a car, and so I'm going to build it the way I like it. But anyway, that's it for that one. Hope the tips were good, and until next time.